everyone, this is episode 24 of homeschool.com's Homeschooling and Loving It podcast. And today we're going to get really transparent with you and talk about some hard things, some hard lessons learned, and some things I really wish I had known before I started homeschooling. And these 12 or so things that I had to learn the hard way by falling on my face are probably going to make you wonder how in the world I didn't know them. But some of them I kind of knew, but I wasn't No judging here, right? No judging. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and get to it. So just for fun, I'm gonna start my list backwards and we're gonna start with number 12. So number 12, I say I learned it's number 12. very, it is so important to praise your kids. And this is something that I did sort of know when I first started homeschooling, but I wasn't intentional about. And I did have to learn this also the hard way. I began to see that I realized that I wasn't communicating as well as I should be with my children and giving them feedback in a positive way as well as negative feedback. And that kind of just goes with those first few years of my homeschooling story anyway. I was just responding negatively. And so I learned I needed to praise them. I needed to let them know when they were doing an okay job, when they were doing a good job, and when they were doing an awesome job. And so by making sure that I talked to them and informed them and gave them feedback, I was enabling them to see exactly what they needed to be doing and shooting for and aiming for. So it helped them all around. I learned also number 11, the hard way, guard, protect, whatever you need to do, the fact that you just can't do it all. You are not superwoman. And yes, of course, early on, I thought I needed to say yes to everything. Never anybody needed anything? Yes, sure. <laughs> no, you can't. You need to choose wisely. You need to choose the necessary things. Choose well. Choose those things that are important. Choose the best. Yes, take that time to think about what you're doing and guard and protect your time with your family and your sanity by only choosing the necessary things. And again, the other flip side of that is... Um, thinking that you're superwoman and having everything perfect and doing everything perfect and making your children perfect and yourself perfect and it just doesn't work. You know, nobody's perfect. None of us are perfect. We all have days where we just don't feel like getting out of bed. We all have days where we just want to wear a ponytail and no makeup or stretchy pants. So take that time to understand that you don't have to be perfect. The bottom line important Number 10 thing is take time for yourself. And this is something that I had to learn the hard way. I was pouring, pouring out of myself and, and working hard day and night, of course, with four young children at the time. It was a lot and I began to feel so stressed out, burnout. I didn't wanna do anything, I didn't wanna get out of bed. And so I realized that I needed to do something. I needed to change something in my behavior and what I was doing. And so, of course, key here is to ask yourself, what feeds your soul? And um, in my situation, I needed to take time to have quiet time, to take time to read my Bible, you know, pray, um, fill my soul with all the things that allowed me to then pour into my children what they needed during the course of the day. And of course, everybody is gonna be different. I understand that. And so I'm encouraging you as a homeschool mom to find those things that help you to fill up your soul, to help you be able to give and give and give as we are so called upon as moms to do every day. Okay, so now tip number nine, make your home a happy place. And I know this sounds kind of silly, maybe trite, but really, um, I learned this as well, the hard way, that when I was stressed out, when I was having a difficult time, my children sensed that. They could see that on my face, they could see that in how I reacted to them, they could see that maybe homeschool wasn't going well, I was not enjoying it, maybe uh, you know, I work from home, maybe something was wrong. So I had to get intentional about making things happy. I had to get intentional about 
play happy music, uh, do fun things, make learning fun, make your day fun, find ways to do it, look for ways. Maybe you play a game today to learn this particular concept in homeschool. Laughter should be the rule of the day. And so if you can incorporate that into your homeschool, into your home, your parenting style, that makes things so much better. The children are happier, they enjoy homeschooling. All right, so tip number eight. This one was something, again, I learned from falling on my face, but ease into homeschooling. So when you get started, remember my story about how difficult I, of a time I had at the beginning of my homeschool adventure? Yeah, I didn't ease into it. I took the hard path. So if you are just getting started, if you're new to homeschooling, I encourage you to find ways to ease yourself into homeschooling. This is another reason why a lot of homeschoolers choose to de-school before they actually jump into full-on homeschooling. It kind of detoxes you from that traditional schooling mindset and gets you acquainted and accustomed to the freer thinking of homeschooling. So take it easy, ease yourself into it. Don't choose a very intensive, difficult curriculum your first go round. Definitely find something that fits your family, um, that fits a daily rhythm for your life, and that fits you. Okay, so the seventh thing that I learned, and you know, these are not necessarily in order of importance, but ignore the naysayers. And you know what I mean by that. These are people who only have negative things to say about what you're doing. They don't agree with your decision. They may ask you those intrusive questions like we talked about on the last podcast. They may think you're crazy. You know what? Get used to it. You don't have to answer that to them. You need to build a tough skin. You need to be confident in your decision and your conviction that you are gonna homeschool because you believe it's the best thing for your family, for your children, for you. And so stand strong in that. And when somebody says something rude or maybe just ignorant, maybe they just don't understand what homeschooling is all about, you can take that opportunity to speak to them about it, to educate them on what homeschooling really is and what it entails and speak to them about your convictions about it, what you think is good about it for your family and respect their, their opinion and hopefully they'll respect yours. And if they don't, just don't worry about it. Just get on with life and stand strong in the decision that you've made. All right, so number six, take breaks. And from with this, I mean long breaks, short breaks, snack breaks, fun breaks, game breaks, take breaks. Because trust me, if you take a break, that refreshes your mind, refreshes your children's minds. And sometimes you can get right back into school and just have better focus and better intention. You know, there aren't any homeschool Nazis here. Nobody's going to be judging you. I'm not going to be judging you because I take breaks too. But Take breaks because it does, it helps reset your thinking, it resets your focus, it helps you enjoy homeschooling, it helps your children to enjoy homeschooling. It's not always a formal setting. Learning can take place anywhere. So take a break, it may look like a field trip. Take a break, it may look like a nature walk. It may look like a history, history movie that you can watch in an afternoon, but those breaks help you to reset and refocus and again find find the fun in homeschooling and so i again i had to learn this one the hard way we were at it we were rigid we were formal i didn't think i could take a break because we would get behind and you know that's that you can't sustain that pace for long periods of time and so breaks became something that I embraced and I began to see the very useful nature of breaks, especially for little boys who are wiggly. They need breaks. Go outside, run around, get those wiggles out, and then we can do math much better. Okay, so number five, don't expect your children to all learn alike. Definitely, definitely something that I really wish I had known out of the gate <laughs> because my first two children were girls and they were both pretty easy to keep schooling. Of course, number two is always a little bit of a challenge, but then along came number three and four, twins, and number three baby was a boy, and we all know that boys learn much differently than little girls, and so that was my first experience with the fact that 
uh-uh, I couldn't fit him in a box. I couldn't fit him into this standardized child pattern that I had in my mind. And so I realized, you know, I've got to learn. I've got to learn him. I've got to rethink my perspective and how I think our homeschool day needs to go and what they need to learn. In fact, I pretty much had to throw the box out the window and learn all over again with him. And it was definitely a good experience, learning experience. Um, and then later on, God blessed me with a child who has dyslexia. And so that was a whole nother learning experience and another place where I had to acknowledge and realize that every child learns differently. And so number four, homeschooling doesn't have to be school at home. And this was a huge face plant for me. I think most of you know that I came from an education background. I left a career, a teaching career, to become a homeschool mom. And with that background, I thought when I stepped into homeschooling that I needed to bring along my classroom and my formal schedules with me. And it wasn't long before I realized that having a toddler and a baby and trying to keep all of that going was a recipe for insanity. And so I had to completely rethink how I perceived what I was gonna be doing as a homeschool mom. And so I couldn't follow that rigid schedule. In fact, that was one of the things that was the biggest downfall for me because that schedule, um, having set times like that. And then of course, with little children and so many children, I never made the times. I never was able to fulfill that schedule. And so I felt like a failure every single day. But when I threw the schedule out the window, made a very loose list of what we needed to do each day and followed that list without times, without restrictions, without formality, we began to find joy again and homeschooling was more relaxed but more enjoyable. It was definitely a very good lesson that I learned. Okay, so we're getting down. Number three, embrace the freedom. And what I mean by this is embrace the freedom of homeschooling. And so that was another thing. I was missing out on the richness of homeschool life those first few years of my homeschooling. And I know some of you are probably thinking, gosh, you must have been a mess. Well, I kind of was. I had crazy expectations, but I felt like every child had to fit and do and accomplish grade level milestones and all of that good stuff. And I was so worried that they might be missing something. And so I was Oh, I was just so uptight. I wasn't embracing the freedom, the fact that I could homeschool what I wanted to homeschool, where I wanted to homeschool, and how I wanted to homeschool them. And, you know, like I mentioned before, the fact that homeschooling doesn't take place in at a desk or in front of a chalkboard or right in front of a textbook, that learning takes place everywhere. And once I began to embrace that and that it was freedom, freedom for all of us, for me and the children, things began to change and began to be much more enjoyable. And of course, this leads me to my next point, which is a very important one. Number two, homeschooling should meet the child where they are. And of course, this ties in, we all know it ties in with the freedom of homeschooling. And so if we're meeting the child where they are, mm, we are gonna customize that homeschool education. And so in all of my trial and error, what I was missing the most was the most important piece of this puzzle, the child. I was missing what my child needed. I was missing all of the joy and the good things out of learning at home by being so rigid and formal in the education that I was giving them. And so this literally most important piece began to be my focus and things began to be completely different. I changed my perception. It was my fault and I had to change. I had to start this. And so we restructured our homeschool and I began to embrace those things that I felt like we needed to enable our children's learning experiences to fit them, to prepare them, to interest them, and to educate them according to their strengths and their talents. And let me just tell you, that was one of the best moves, the best lessons that I've learned in this homeschooling adventure.
And so this final point is understanding how our children learn. And you know, without understanding that, we can't get, we can't educate them where they are. We can't customize their homeschool lessons to meet their needs. We can't enjoy our day without first doing this, understanding how they learn. And you know, that looks like a lot of different things and it could be learning styles or uh, learning personalities, but understanding that each of our children have a way that fits them. So for example, my oldest daughter loved books, anything that had to do with books. And of course, as she decided what she wanted to do with her future, that's what she had told me she wanted to be a librarian. And so we tried to customize her homeschool plan to meet, of course, her desire, her most fulfilling way to learn was through books. And so we got as many different kinds of books from textbooks to picture books to um, living books to workbooks, any kind of book worked well for her. And then of course I mentioned my son who was completely different. He's very hands-on. And so we needed to find learning that appealed, a learning style that appealed to him. And so a lot of hands-on work. He also liked uh, the computer and animated things. And so we used some online lessons um, and, and all of that kind of thing it just fits to to bring together all their all the different aspects of our children to help them succeed and to develop those amazing people that they are meant to be. And of course my my last example, the child the child that I have with dyslexia, she didn't do well with textbooks, things like that. So she of course has to be more hands-on, but we also incorporated videos and pictures and things like that that are visual. So think about that when you're planning your homeschool, when you're trying to put these, these, all of these aspects together to customize your child's education. That's the most important part. Find things that interest them. Find things that motivate them. Find things that will just compel them to enjoy learning and to enjoy homeschooling with you and the family. And so this to me, I felt like was really the most important lesson I learned through all of these trials and errors and all of that good stuff. So have you learned some really important lessons on your homeschool journey? And if so, I would really love to hear from you. I would love to hear your story and those lessons that you've learned. And of course, I hope that you guys have a wonderful homeschool week full of all kinds of blessings with grace and joy, Jamie.